There's no question that these viral pandemics, everything from SARS to MERS to swine flu, H1N1, and now these COVID viruses, they are jumping out of animal confinement operations and now wreak havoc in our own bodies. This is a serious disease and it's getting scarier. Hey everyone, this is Klaus from Plant Based News. So in this video, I interview Dr. Michael Clapper, who's a US physician, and we speak about the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the first questions I asked him was about the statistic that three out of every four infectious diseases originate from animals. Oh, Klaus, um, you know, we could do the whole hour just on this. And what you, you've hit the most resonant chord um, in my uh, in my being at this point, because, ooh, the strange virus, ooh, get, get, let's get a vaccine, let's get out, and then just focus on the virus. Where did it come from? It came from violating natural law for every, every place where humans have encroached into jungles. And all these hellacious mass infections that we've been seeing, they are all from the animals, from how we've been abusing them and confining them. And you, know, you can find 100,000 chickens in a shed. You can find uh, you know, 50,000 pigs in a, in a building. They're sick, they're coughing on each other, they're vomiting, they got diarrhea, the other animals eat the feces, they pass the viruses around, they mutate with the, uh, with the uh, other animals, the viruses that they brought in. And quite honestly, uh, and, and why, why am I you know, so distressed? One, you know, the pain that I feel just thinking about factory farming and all those innocent creatures in those sheds is bad enough. The animals have been abused in this way for so long that uh, without being overly poetic, when the animals are being slaughtered, you know, they scream and they're screaming, don't kill me, don't do this. And, and, and the scream falls on deaf ears. The humans just keep doing their thing and keep, keep slaughtering them. The, the animals have been screaming and screaming, we haven't heard. Well, now, as I watched the news last night and watch how many of the slaughterhouses and the meat packing plants around the country in, in Nebraska and in Iowa and in South Dakota, slaughterhouse after slaughterhouse after slaughterhouse is closing down because uh, the workers there are passing the virus all around. And it's like the animals are saying, you didn't, you wouldn't listen to our screams before. Well, we're just going to take you, we're going to shut your lives down. We're going to take all these humans and make them sick and get them out of here and shut this building down. And that's basically what, what, what we are observing now. And so not only for this current injustice, but again, the next one is brewing. The next viral infection is, is in some chicken the warehouse already being passed uh, from one coughing chicken to another. Chickens can cough, yes. Uh, and or then the next pig virus is going to jump out and we're going to do this all again with, with another virus. And all of it is unnecessary. This is all a message to, you know, to change what we are eating. If we adopt a plant-based diet, all of this goes away. Mm. I was speaking to Dr. Greg a, a few days ago and he said that there's been, it's interesting what he said, it made me think there's been three ages of uh, chronic disease, he said. Number one, plagues back in the day where we first, or when we first domesticated animals. Number two, the chronic diseases um, that kind of punctuated the 20th, 20th century and the 21st century. And now we're in a kind of third age where all the pandemics that have happened in the last few years have once again come from my exploitation of animals. So what do you think about this? Um, and uh, how much resistance can we expect from the animal agriculture industry? Oh, we're huge, uh, absolutely. They, the, it's a fascinating time, uh, and, uh, and it's a frightening time. I, I don't want to minimize this at all, but I'm watching these powerful forces, the immovable object and the irresistible force, the, you know, the uh, you know, meat eating in our society is, you know, is part of the fabric and it's sort of the comfort foods we were raised with and it's what the government and everybody says we should be eating and we must eat flesh three times a day. It's totally biologically absurd, but uh, that's, that's what we're told to do. And we're so attached to this and this huge mega uh, agribusiness uh, empire is built around keeping that uh, that supply of meat coming out of those processing plants, their slaughterhouses. The truth is, it's it, so many, you know, they're going to talk about the new normal and the world that we're going to emerge into when we come out of this is going to be a different world. 
and you know, that we must, must have a different take on meat. It, it's going to, uh, it's going to force us to re-examine our relationship with that. And it may play out literally in bloody ways uh, because there's other powerful factors going on, if I can enlarge a bit. One of the most heartbreaking scenes I saw on TV was this, it was a drone shot of a tractor going through a field of green and, um, and the green was string beans and, um, and, the flower, and the farmer was plowing them back into the field because it would cost him money to pay um, the, the harvesters to come and, and pick all the beans uh, to what? To bring them to the warehouse where they would rot. And, uh, and so it would cost him money to harvest it. It's, it's more economic for him to just plow the beans back into the soil. The heartbreaking and, and it and it bodes for food shortages in, in the months to come. But as I see these slaughterhouses close, that's a different game because those green beans in the field, at least they don't ask anything of the farmer, they don't cost them anything to just lay there. But these pigs must be fed, these chickens must be fed. Yeah, or they're gonna have, have 100,000 starving hogs in a building. Um, so, uh, so what are you going to feed them? Well, you feed them the, the big feed. Well, where's that coming from? If you can't make money off these uh, animals, it's coming from the, the from the pork producer's savings account for his kids' college education. It, it's uh, it's coming right out of the pork producer's profits. Well, he's not going to stand for that. And so, what are they going to do? Well, they're all going to get killed anyway. Kill, kill them all. Cull them is the is the euphemism. And uh, and you're going to see massive, massive slaughters uh, of, of, of hundreds of thousands, millions. There, we have hundreds of millions of chickens and pigs and, and cattle in, in these factory farms. They're all going to be killed. And the animals in the laboratories, the, the researchers can't come in and do their research. They're going to kill the monkeys and kill the mice. Now there's going to be this wave of death that sweeps across our country that, that's going to make us have to look at, at what we have created here. And, and how this, this tsunami of death is sloshing back on us in the form of this virus. And I hope we get this idea that maybe those plants should stay closed uh, and, and, and not open up again. Because yeah, they're going to kill all the pigs. Well, now you got to wait for the pigs to, to mature for the next crop. Well, what are you going to eat in the meantime? You're going to eat rice and beans and mushrooms and, uh, and plant-based foods. And maybe this is what it will take to get hundreds of millions of Americans to, to open up to when we say whole food plant-based diet, this is delicious, it's nourishing, it's, it, it heals the planet, it heals your arteries. These folks were right all along, well maybe they, they, the folks will now take the fingers out of their ears and open, they'll be forced to, to look at these other options. And if we're there with some great tasting bean chili, uh, then we'll help this uh, transition happen and, and a new age will, will dawn that'll be healthier for everybody, including the animals. That's really, really powerful. Um, we've obviously known about the environmental cost of meat for a number of years. We've ignored that. We've known the animal suffering. We've ignored that. The health effects we've known about also ignored. But with the economic recession due to the coronavirus and its clear link to, to uh, animal consumption, do you think this kind of fourth thing, this new thing, this kind of economic category, do you think this is finally going to tip the balance? It certainly might. Uh, it would be one of the few silver linings to come out of this, and I certainly hope it does. And yes, I think plant-based nutrition will get a huge boost. Will it be enough? Will, um, will people miss their meat so much that, uh, that they just got to, you know, they'll pay, uh, you know, $100 a pound for steak, which is what it should cost. Now, uh, well, stay tuned. Um, well, this is uh, going to be a ex- very fascinating time of change. We'll see who we are when we come out of this tunnel. Mm. I've, uh, I've heard that type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure are high risk factors for, for COVID-19, um, both of which studies have shown that can be kind of tackled effectively on a plant-based diet. So are you saying that a plant-based diet offers protection against the COVID-19 virus? And can you discuss why this is? Oh my, a uh, very important and profound question. A healthy immune system, um, and by that I mean 
we, we have two types of immunity. They call it the uh, in, um, innate immunity. That's the integrity of the membranes in our in our lungs, in our sinuses, in our skin, um, the inflammatory reactions we're able to muster up. The, these non-specific defenses that we have that work against bacteria, virus, etc. Those take vitamins and minerals, so you want those nice and strong. And then there's adaptive immunity. Uh, when a virus gets in, the lymphocytes uh, take its fingerprints and they whip up an antibody protein specifically designed to that particular virus, uh, and that's the adaptive immunity. Well, that takes vitamins and minerals too. Good nutrition will help with that. It doesn't guarantee that you won't get the infection, but it, it, it helps you ward it off to the greatest extent possible. And if you do get the infection, hopefully uh, you're, you'll muster your defenses real quick and it'll just turn into a couple of days of a body aches and fluey feelings and cough, and then, then, it, then it passes through, which is what most people experience. We, we shouldn't lose sight of that. But then there's those uh, feared pre-existing conditions. What is that? We're talking about so the folks with congestive heart failure um, are at high risk. Uh, the folks with pre-existing lung disease, um, the, the chronic smokers and the um, folks with asthma, uh, if, if their lungs start getting inflamed and swollen, uh, they can wind up in trouble very quickly. The diabetic folks, if your tissues are full of sugars, the, the, all the sugar inhibits your uh, your, your white blood cells ability to eat up germs for your lymphocytes to make antibodies, etc. So poorly controlled diabetes uh, is a welcome mat for the virus as well. Uh, the good news is, however, uh, as I've been telling the medical students as I've been going around to the schools as part of our Moving Medicine Forward initiative, that <clears throat> the chronic diseases, the, the cardiovascular disease, the diabetes, the, the, the asthma, etc., these diseases get better, go away on a whole food plant-based diet, and it happens quickly, doctors, I tell them, within days to weeks. The... Um, the obesity starts to melt away and the arteries open up and the high blood pressure comes down and the joints stop hurting and the skin clears up. Well, this is a great time to take advantage of that remarkable healing power that's in your body that gets unleashed with a whole food plant-based diet. If you are overweight or diabetic or you've got high blood pressure or you're taking and, and, you know, prednisone or things that are suppressing your immunity, this is a great time to get on that healthy whole food, plant-based diet, lots of salads and soups and steamed veggies, et cetera, and, and start melting that uh, excess fat away, start controlling those blood sugars, strengthen, and this will help your heart muscle, your arteries open up, it'll make it easier for your heart to pump. Uh, all these things will start reversing those nasty pre-existing conditions, uh, and you'll be less of a, of a target when the virus knocks on your door. So all the way around, no matter how you look at it, you know, this, we're, we're being punished, if you will, for, for straying from that whole food plant-based diet that our simian bodies are really designed to eat. We are not carnivorous apes. We don't have claws on our hands. We don't know. We've got starch digesting enzymes in our saliva. We're, we're plant-eating creatures like our gorilla and bonobo cousins are. Uh, and the further we stray from that, the, the more we unleash these terrible biological repercussions. And that's what we're seeing here. And these diseases are part of that package. They are the consequence of the wrong fuel going into our body. That's why our arteries clog and we get obese. Well, get back on that whole food plant-based train, get yourself a lean, healthy body, and, uh, and those pre-existing conditions go away. And then maybe when the virus knocks on your door, you'll have, uh, have a flu for a few days, a fluey feeling for a few days, and, and you'll be through it. And so there's all sorts of reasons to, that as individuals and as a society, we need to get back to a whole food plant-based eating. And, and uh, this is a steamroller that's uh, knocking the door down and maybe you know, lead us uh, to that help, more helpful path. Mm -hmm. Last question, do you think there are any kind of silver linings from this, this virus? Oh, there's going to be, a, I think, a whole lot of silver linings. We're going to so much more appreciate being able to walk outside, to go out to a meal in a restaurant, to, uh, to meet someone and give them a hug. Uh, real human interactions are going to be so much more valued and treasured, for one. 
Second, we'll get to know ourselves better. You stay inside for you know week after week after week. It's going to force you to grow. And I hope people are using this time to learn something, and increase their power, uh, increase their ability to get along with people. I, I hope it makes us more tolerant, uh, so we don't react to every little thing. We don't play victim. Uh, you know, uh, no matter who you're living with, small stuff is small stuff. Let, you know, let it let it go by and. Uh, you know, if someone leaves their dishes in the sink, just do the dishes, you know, they'll do it for you the next day. Uh, you know, just uh, learn how to, to navigate gently through this life. And we're, we're being forced to do that as well. Um, Education is going to be different. I think uh, it's going to open up distance learning to lots, lots more people. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see we need some things a lot less than we thought. Uh, everything from air travel to meat on the plate. And uh, it's going to make us value some things and, and appropriately devalue others. And, and if the uh, fates are on our side and uh, we don't tear ourselves apart in the meantime, we could come through, out uh, from this as a wiser as well as a healthier um, population. And, and that's what I'm hoping for everyone.